Then the evaluation and reflection component is where you think about it, right? It's data-informed reflective practice. This is where it all comes together, okay? Now, when we come there, I want you to imagine two teachers. Imagine for a minute that you're the principal with the vacancy at the school. Think about two teachers. Let's, let's use some relatively generic names. We'll call them Smith and Jones. Oh, which makes me think of these guys. Okay, so we've got Mr. Smith and Mr. Jones. They're both applying for the same position. Now you've got Mr. Jones. He's experienced, he's good at what he does, he's fabulous, he's amazing, he gets great results, but he knows everything. He doesn't want to take a workshop, he doesn't want to collaborate, he works alone, you know. He gets great results, he's a great teacher, but what's going to happen in a couple of years? Have you noticed how rapidly your field is changing? Jones is going to wake up one morning and realize he's out of date. He's obsolete. Wait, I think that's the plot of some movie I saw. Huh. Smith, on the other hand, Smith is a good teacher. Smith is good and he's hungry. He wants to learn more. He knows there's more to know. He knows he could improve, and he is desperate to get every last ounce of ability and information that he can get, because good enough is not good enough for him. So now imagine you're that principal. Who would you hire? You can do what you want, but in my book, the correct answer is Smith. Because two years from now, when everything changes, when kids are totally different, Smith is going to adapt. He's going to collaborate, he's going to learn, he's going to grow. And that's what the evaluation reflection component lets you do. You're going to identify your best and worst learning goal and talk about why they came out that way. What contributed to the success of this one and hindered this one? How could you do it better in the future? You're going to talk about your strengths. You're going to talk about how you can grow. You're going to talk about what this whole experience taught you about teaching and learning. And that is all of this. Seven, I want to point out, because the conclusions that you make in this component have to be consistent with the data. So if your data says you stink at ES, ES, uh, ELLs, don't hide from it. Okay? The exemplary stuff, deeper reflection. And E5 is to set a specific professional learning goal. That should be pretty easy to do because the data will show you what your goals should be. Make sense? Now, that is the teacher work sample. Everybody say yay. yay. All right. Real quickly, when you are done with the teacher work sample, there's still a couple of things you need to do. Make whatever revisions your coordinator tells you to make, because they told you for a reason, right? Assemble all seven components into one document. Submit the whole business to live text. You've got those four things you're going to submit. And complete the teacher work sample feedback survey. Now the way that works is there's a website. You'll get the address. There's more about this in the, in the slideshow online. But there's a website. You'll be given a six character code that you will enter there as your personal token to get in to take the survey. It's completely anonymous. The codes or the tokens are kept in one database and the responses in another. And there is absolutely no way to connect the two unless you say, this is such and such a person, and I think blah, 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 blah. Right? So don't do that, and it's still anonymous. Okay? You'll get that information from your coordinator when you're all done. Welcome to the age of accountability. 
These are the days when you have to demonstrate that you make an impact on student learning. And as graduates of these programs going out into the field, next year is when all this stuff is mandated for the teachers that are out there. you will already be familiar with what that looks like. So, in the age of accountability, show some growth. Reflect, get better, and you'll be fine. You'll be employed for a really long time. Quick post assessment. I almost forgot the post assessment. What's the first thing you gotta do for your TWS? Contextual factors, yes. How many learning goals? Three to, five. Three to five. Brilliant. If my learning goals meets all of the proficient indicators and meets exemplary indicator E2, what's my rating? Proficient. Good job. If I have questions or if I need resources, where do I go? Website. Website. Rock on. Describe any one way in which the teacher work sample can help you. Accountability. Cool. There's a lot out there. I heard a bunch of people say stuff. So try this one on for size. Raise your hand if you can tell me something interesting about this graph. What's going on here? Yes, ma'am. Some of the students went down. So when I look at those three students, I'd have to look at what's going on there, evaluate that, see what's up. What about this? All right. I'm going to throw you a bone here. Think about this chronologically. The blue bars are the pre-assessment. I enter that information before I get my post-assessment results. So when I see that my students have already attained mastery on learning goal one, on average, what do I do with that? Quick review, gloss right over it and save the time because I got some work to do with learning goal three, right? So this is how that data can really inform your practice. And last but not least, what do you notice here? All right, what do you see? All right, I've got student one and student six. On the pre-assessment, they not only have demonstrated mastery of my content, but they've scored an A. So if I proceed through my unit as planned, what can I expect out of student one and student six? Serious behavior problems. As a gifted educator, if you see this situation, that's the time to swoop in and offer one and six enrichment activities. They don't need the other stuff you've got planned, but clearly everybody else does. Everybody else is in the right place for your instruction. So when you see one and six, say, hey, you've got this. Good job. Don't give them additional worksheets. Don't make them your in-class tutors. Give them something engaging, exciting, and interesting that they can work on to take their learning to a higher level. Cool?